And I heard a great voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself with them shall be their God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. My dear friends, today we have the celebration of a dedication of a church, the two churches being the Church of St. Peter and St. Paul in Rome, the, it is a wonderful occasion, and as I'll read to you later in a few moments from Don Galanger, it's a beautiful occasion because in the year when Constantine the Great opened up the city of, of Rome to ch building of churches, he himself became a Catholic, and this was a wonderful time. So for 300 years we had no churches, and now we have the St. Constantine building the Basilica of St. Peter and the Basilica of St. Paul. And as we just read, we see this is God coming with his, to his people on earth. That's what the church is. And we know that is true, of course, because we have the Blessed Sacrament here. So God dwelling with men. And as the Apocalypse says, it's a prelude to what's going to happen with all of us. Because in heaven, when we're all brides of Christ, and they will be the people of God. God will wipe away all tears from their eyes, and death shall be no more, nor mourning, nor crying, nor sorrow shall be any more, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. As I tell you, and as Padre Pio tells us, always long for heaven, always think of him, heaven, Always think of the next life. I think we're all too pre preoccupied with this valley of tears. We've learned to be comfortable in this world, how this world is so nice and so on. And we think that this is our place of abode, but it's not. God has not made us for this world. This is a preparation. Here we're supposed to know God, love God and serve God. And then we will be in happy with him as his spouse for all eternity, all eternity. That's what the church is all about. The Catholic Church, the church is the spouse of Jesus Christ. But it's not a building, of course, that is a spouse, but the people in the building. We are the spouses, brides of Christ. And this is the most wonderful thing he has in store for us, eternal happiness. This is what we should be longing for and not thinking of this world all the time. We become all of us, all of us, myself included, of course, too comfortable in this world. And yet we know from the Hail Holy Queen, this is a valley of tears, sorrow and suffering and so on. And we need to work out our salvation in prayer and fasting and almsgiving and so on. And if you read anything about purgatory, my dear friends, you know this is a place, place of purgation. If we're not purified from the, from the sins of this world, we're going to have to spend many, much time in purgatory. So this is one of the things that we want to think about. And from what I read and what we hear, the this, this, this suffering in purgatory is intense, intense. And an hour of suffering in purgatory is certainly great, much more difficult than anything we have here on earth. Various people have come back from purgatory telling us that they, the fire and everything that's there is, is so severe. Nothing on earth can compare to it. And if we could so better to suffer on earth than in purgatory. So we're gonna be, we have to be purified to be the brides of Christ. That's what it's all about. And we need this world. This is what this is all about. And God will send us his heavenly visitations with suffering and sickness and so on to purify us in this world so that we can be ready for heaven. And that's what we have today in these, these, these beautiful, this beautiful mass in honor of the basilicas, the, the blessings of the two basilicas. Dom Garanger tells us what these, this day means. And I'll read this to you. 
from Don Prosper Garangier on the dedication of St. Peter's and St. Paul's. The present feast, therefore, deserves to be more than a local solemnity. Its extension to the universal church is a subject for the world's gratitude. Thanks to this feast, we can all make together in spirit today the pilgrimage ad limina apostolorum, which our ancestors performed with such fatigue and danger, yet never thought they purchased too dearly its holy joys and blessings. Heavenly mountains, glittering heights of the new Sion, there are the gates of our true country, the two lights of the immense world. There Paul's voice is heard like thunder. There Peter withholds, withholds or hurls the thunderbolt. The former, St. Paul, opens the hearts of men. The latter, St. Peter, opens heaven. Peter is the foundation stone. Paul, the architect of the temple, where stands the altar by which God is propitiated. Propitiation, of course, means where God is satisfied. The sins of the world are satisfied by the, by the holy mass that we have on the altar. Both together form a single fountain which pours out its healing and refreshing waters. All right, my dear friends, this is why we're here today. This is why we come to church, because this is the tabernacle of the Lord, and we praise the Lord, and we have this most wonderful sacrifice that was instituted by Jesus Christ the night before he died. As you know, the Jews had their bulls and their calves. And if you think about it, when Solomon was, was blessing, was bless, blessing the, the temple, he sacrificed so many oxen and calves and everything. It was just unbelievable. Thousands and thousands and thousands. Of course, we don't have that kind of a sacrifice now. We have a greater sacrifice, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. This is my body. This is the cup of my blood, which shall be shed for you. The mystery of faith, which shall be shed for you and for all for the remission of sins. So let us thank the Lord for this wonderful day. Blessings of the two churches, St. Peter and St. Paul in Rome, the mother churches, as it were, of our faith. And let us thank God for this wonderful propitiation, this sacrifice for our sins. Christ has taken upon us our sins, as we say in the script in the Mass, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Lamb of God who takes away my sins so that I can enter into the kingdom of heaven. So let us thank the Lord and let us pray as Our Lady has asked us to pray and sacrifice because, my dear friends, as you know, our world is in a desperate, desperate struggle. All you have to do is to see the terrible tragedy in America with the stealing of ballots and the cheating and everything. That's a symbol of our world. That's what we are, all right? We're filled with sin and corruption. And were it not for the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, I don't know if any of us would get to heaven. All right, so we just thank God. But for the grace of God, we'd all be stealing and robbing and cheating. So my dear friends, let us thank the Lord and let us continue to pray the rosary for all of our friends, all of our relatives, so that we could all enter into the kingdom of God, which was prepared for us from all eternity. May the Lord bless you.